Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing super well today. I'm feeling re-energized and recharged. The sun is out today, which means it's gonna be a good day. As you can tell from the title, we are actually gonna start refreshing this bedroom. We've been living with it and I still absolutely love this bedroom. Like this backdrop makes me really happy just to film in front of, but I think we can make it better with a few changes and we are going to take this bit by bit. So this video is just going to be the beginning of that. If you watch me make this over, then you probably remember that when we first did this, this bedroom was super gray. There's no lighting in here. So we really depend on the windows and then mood lighting throughout. And I ended up turning it into this cozy space with lots of warm tones. And I think that was totally the right move in here. Being in California and living here really puts me in like an experimental type of mood. So like even this green headboard was something I've never done before. And it really put me in the mindset to try out different styles. And if you've ever been to LA or just California in general, you know that people are not afraid to express themselves. Even going to the mall or just making a Target run, people love to go all out and they literally look like they're walking runways. So being here and being in that type of environment has definitely pushed me to go outside of my comfort zone. I really want to bring this room to its fullest potential and I definitely need your help for some of these design choices. So I will go over them later. So we're going to get into it for the wall behind me. But right now I want to focus my attention on the wall that's actually behind you guys. So let me turn you around and show you what it looks like right now. So this is the back wall that you guys never really see in my my videos because I just don't like the way it looks really. First of all, it is super long. So that is where we enter the room. And here, I don't really know what to do with that. If you guys have any ideas, please let me know because I've just been leaving it as is. And this console here was a Facebook marketplace find. I absolutely love it. But as you can see, it's just like not very functional because it is all open shelving. And this glass is not helping because you can see the cords dangling everywhere and it's just very messy. Something that drew me to this piece is the caning down here but what I've realized is since it is like bendable you can't put too much weight on here so it kind of has just become like a little catch-all of random stuff. So I really want to make something that will be a lot more functional for storage, especially since these are all items I usually would put away in a dresser. So for example, jewelry, accessories, Brian's little massage gun. Those are all things I don't really want to be looking at all the time. So having something with drawers will be so helpful. Hello, little dust bunny. Also, I never thought I would be a TV in the bedroom type of person, but I've totally converted over because we love watching movies and shows in bed. So yeah, that is staying. And up top, the gallery wall is a little bit incomplete because um, I use one of those frames for the bathroom. And when we moved in, we really didn't have that much artwork. So I used whatever we already had, but I would really like to expand on this and make it a little bit more cohesive with everything else. So like this doesn't look terrible, but I just know it could look so much better. And I think it really does start with this console. So I have an idea to make over a dresser and just make it look super luxe and cool and very unique. So of course I'm gonna hop onto Facebook Marketplace, see what we can find and go from there. Okay, I think we found some good items. A lot of people are actually selling Ikea dresses by me. So I just messaged a bunch of them. Hopefully they all get back to me and I can actually pick one them up today. While we wait for that, I actually wanted to get started on the design for the bed wall, which is the opposite wall from the dresser. So when I made my DIY headboard, this was the photo that inspired it. And behind it has this really cool pattern wallpaper. At least I think it's wallpaper. It also could totally be hand painted, which I think would be so cool to do. So I want to try something like this just to add more interest to the wall. Or my other idea is to do this type of a vibe, which basically looks like giant brush strokes. I'm still figuring out how I can make it this large. I feel like you would probably have to like get a broom or something, but I thought it'd be fun to do a sample size of it so we can test out the technique and then put it on the wall and see how we feel about it. And this is when I'm gonna need your help because I'm very indecisive when it comes to this type of stuff. So when I hear your feedback, it really helps me make a decision and feel a little bit more secure about it. I'm gonna try the brush stroke one first just because I feel a little bit more confident about it and we're actually going to use a color that was rejected for this bedroom so this was actually one of the sample colors and I'm using a big chip brush to try to get kind of those very sparse brush strokes and you want to get like 
barely any paint on there. The thing about this is that you have to make it look super organic and not be too controlled. I'm letting that dry right now, but so far it's looking good. And now I'm working on the next pattern, which actually requires a little bit of math. It looks like there is a grid going on. So I'm gonna map out a grid of six inch squares, basically, and then draw in some lines, or maybe I'll use some tape. And basically within each of the squares is where we're gonna draw in our wavy lines. So let's hang them up next to my headboard. This is actually so fun because it's like little sample wallpaper swatches that I made myself. So here's option number one. It is very calming, very zen and organic. And I feel like it does go with this vibe really well. I actually really like that. Here's option number two. I feel like this is very different for me. It's super unique. It definitely makes a statement and it's bold, but not too in your face because of the neutral colors that we chose. And what's funny is while I worked on this, I was thinking to myself, maybe I don't like this as much as I thought I did. But now that it's dried and all the lines are gone, I really, really like this. Sometimes you just need to take a step back and look at it with fresh eyes. So I feel like that's what happened here. And and I think it is so fun. Let's see, put it on top of this. What do you guys think? I'm actually gonna put these side by side so we can get a better look. Do you like option A better or option B better? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below because I honestly think both of them look really good. Good news, you guys. Someone got back to me about their dresser and this is actually going to be perfect. It is a white mom dresser and it comes with a glass top, which is great because it'll keep it protected. I specifically was looking for a dresser with six drawers on it because this is my inspo piece and this is what I'm gonna try to recreate. It's from Lulu in Georgia and it has a $2,500 price tag, but I feel like it's worth it because it's really good quality. It's super unique looking, but it is sold out. So even if I wanted it, I couldn't get it. We are going to try to DIY it. We're going to go grab the dresser tonight and get started on it tomorrow. I'm taking a quick break for lunch and I literally just made rice to eat with leftovers, but my good chop box just came in. So I'm actually gonna make my hyper fixation meal for lunch right now, which is miso fish. We've been really loving cooking fish lately, so I'm very excited for this package. Thank you to Good Chop. They are the sponsor of today's video. And if you are someone who likes high quality meat and seafood, this is for you. They have fully customizable boxes. So everything in this box I chose, so we got ground beef, chicken breast, ribeye steaks, as requested by Brian. We also got bacon and shrimp, which we've also been eating like almost every day. And usually I make a miso salmon, but I really wanted to try trout, so I ordered their steelhead trout as well. So you basically pick whatever you want, set the schedule, and it gets delivered straight to your door. I actually got very overwhelmed when I shop in person at a grocery store, so this saves me so much more time, and also I know that I'm getting the best cuts. And like it says on the box, no antibiotics and no added hormones and also everything is sustainable and all of their products are sourced from the US. I've actually never made trout before, but I'm excited to. This looks so good. I'm gonna let this sit out to thaw. And of course, chicken breast. I eat this every single week. I love making Mediterranean bowls with this. Grilling season is coming up and this ribeye, the marbling on it, so good. I read on their website that they have over 70 cuts to choose from, so there's something for everyone. And Good Shop also has a 100% money back guarantee, so if you don't like something, you can contact their customer service and get your money back. Okay, that lunch was so good. The trout was delicious. If you guys wanna check out Good Shop for yourself, you can go to goodshop.com slash YouTube and use the code TINALAY120, and that will get you $120 off across of your first four boxes with them. I'll have all that info down below for you guys, so 
make sure you check it out. You guys have no idea how excited I am for this project because I think this is gonna look just like the original. So I imported a picture of the mom dresser and I always like to mock up a project before I commit to it because it kind of helps me go through all the steps on how to actually build it. The first thing that we have to build is the base on the bottom here and we're gonna make it fluted just like the original. I also plan on staining everything in a similar color as well. And in the drawers we have these little squares which should be pretty easy just to glue on top and space them out correctly. I plan on getting wood that's pretty thin because whenever I work on projects like this, I don't like anything to look too bulky, especially for drawers that you're opening all the time. I feel like having a thinner profile is better. Okay, let's do this. Here she is. If you've ever been to Ikea, you have definitely seen this piece. This is the Malm six drawer dresser. This has been around forever. It's a super popular style because it's so minimal and honestly fits with anyone's aesthetic. I honestly was not expecting this to be so heavy. It was a struggle putting it in our car. The girl who sold it to me actually said that they're selling it because her boyfriend didn't want to bring it up the stairs. So I definitely do not blame them. This is actually in pretty good condition. I'm only noticing that there is a little bit of lifting on the sides over here. But other than that, this is a really great piece to DIY. The only thing is the bottom is actually hollow. So I'm gonna start with that and build a base and then we're gonna build a little pedestal that's gonna be similar to the inspo photo. You can see from the inspo that there is a fluted design on that. So that is what I'm trying to emulate here. And first I need to take out all the drawers measure everything, and then cut out the base. There is just something about furniture without legs that just makes it feel not as expensive. So by elevating it, it literally elevates the overall look. And it's pretty simple to do as well. You could totally take this idea of a fluted base and add it to any existing furniture and it will automatically give it a mid-century modern flair. I'm just so excited to get a new piece into the bedroom. I am definitely in my organization era at the moment. And this is gonna help free up some space in our closet to actually fold things and put them away. Especially for pajamas, I feel like those definitely have to go in a drawer because hanging them up just doesn't feel practical. Lately, we've just been enjoying living here and I just feel so lucky and grateful for our beautiful home. There's no better feeling than just getting in the rhythm of things and falling into your routines and having everything working and flowing on our home is just more important than ever. So this refresh was definitely needed. <music> we have something solid to put our pedestal on. I don't know if that's like the correct terminology, but that's what I'm gonna go with. So this is gonna be centered on here which I will figure out later. But you can kind of already see the vision and now I have to cut out the little fluted pieces for the front and the side. So for this step, I'm using square dowels, which is about three or four dollars for each one. I hopefully don't have to use too many. We're gonna cut this down into the same height as this base here. So it's gonna be about three and a half inches and attach them to the sides with even spacing all throughout the whole thing to give us that beautiful fluted detail. I'm going on record right now to say that this is the first time that I made a stop block that actually works. I was able to fly through all of these cuts in just a few minutes. And the fact that I don't have to measure anything, honestly, is just so amazing. I'm very proud of myself for actually making it work because in the past I've made it before and it always moves and it never works correctly. So the fact that I was able to do this, it just makes me so happy and just proves that you can always learn something new to improve your projects. Okay, I'm just about to get started 
started on the last of the cutting for this project. So we are gonna work on the actual drawer fronts. So these are eight inches wide, which I was able to find a piece of wood that would fit this. These are super thin and lightweight, and as you can see, fit perfectly across. But the length of the drawer is actually gonna be too short to fit four of these across with spaces. So I am gonna have to cut these down a little bit. I'm gonna put this down because it's heavy. So I was having a hard time trying to figure out what length I should cut this at, but I did find a calculator as well as a couple of videos that helped me. So I will link those below. It is super helpful to have, especially when you don't have an exact length like I'm working with today. But with a calculator, it did all of the math for me and all I had to do was double check to make sure everything was gonna fit. Okay, let's cut. so much to do today. Every single time I think I'm close to the finish line with a project, I forget that there's all these little steps in between that I still have to do. Like today I have to work on the fluting and I also have to sand all of these little pieces down. So that should be fun. Now I'm actually gonna start with the center one just in case this doesn't space out evenly if I were to go from one side to the other. I feel like I've made that mistake a bunch of times, so this avoids that. And I'm using a scrap piece of trim to space everything out so that it's a little bit thinner than the same width as each one of the square dowels. I think that gives it a nicer look. This little fluted detail really does make everything look so much more stylish. I honestly love anything reeded, fluted, or slatted, and if you can't add it to your walls, you can definitely add it to your furniture for a sleek, sophisticated look. And I learned that clamps are going to be your best friend for a project like this, especially since we're working with such small, lightweight pieces that are decorative. Nails really aren't necessary, and the glue with the clamps is going to be more than enough to hold it in place. And I don't know about you guys, but whenever I nail something in place and I fill it with wood filler and stain it afterwards, it just doesn't look right. I can always see the wood filler. I don't know if there's a better technique to camouflage it. If anyone knows, let me know your tips because I would really like to figure that out for future projects. This this came out so perfect and now I'm actually going to add a layer of wood conditioner and while I wait for that to dry I'm actually going to get started on painting the body of the dresser. So I went back and forth on what I wanted to do with it because obviously it is a white laminate and we are working with a lot of woods and I want it to look like wood. So we are going to do the faux wood grain hack with some gel stain. If you haven't seen me do this before this honestly is such a good technique. All you need is a paint for your base so I'm using a very warm brown color. Um, it actually looks kind of orange when I paint it on, but it honestly turned out fine when I did it last time, so I'm gonna reuse that. And then you, of course, need your gel stain, so I'm going with Golden Oak because I feel like this is what the original looks like. My only concern is that the colors are not gonna match perfectly, so the wood versus what I paint on the laminate might be a little bit different. I'm gonna try to get it as close as possible so that it is unclockable, taking a moment to pray to the DIY gods. So I'm really hoping this works out. We are gonna start with the paint first and go from there. Max capacity in here. I cannot get over this color. If you are looking for a light wash stain, this is it. And now we have to get this look onto the drawers. So 
I only did one coat of the paint, which is totally fine because the stain is mostly gonna cover it anyways. The last time I did this, I actually just used paper towels and that actually gave me such a good wood grain look. After it dried for a couple of hours, I used a chip brush like this and just feathered out any buildup. That was really important to do on that piece because there was a lot of detail, but since this is flat, I feel like we probably don't need to do that. Plus for these drawer fronts specifically, the majority of it is going to get covered up by our squares anyways. So I'm mostly going to focus and be precise on the actual body of the dresser. I really hope this turns out good. Let's do it. Dip, dip. So this has been drying for about an hour now and I feel like this is what really makes the difference. You basically just wanna take the brush and go over it ever so lightly. And doing this just blurs out the lines a little bit, makes it look a little bit more realistic and not so sharp. For example, this part looks a lot more realistic than this part, which is super streaky. But once I just go over it a little bit with the brush, it just makes it look so much more realistic. I'm using a quick dry super glue to attach all the squares on and this is great because you could just hold it down for 30 to 45 seconds and it will give you a really strong hold. Some of these weren't completely flat though so I ended up clamping down the edges for a couple of minutes while it dried down. At this point I was so excited because even though I did cut these down you really cannot tell that these are not squares and it very much looks like the inspo photo. And after everything dried down I made sure to follow up with a top coat over every single piece. This actually makes the room like feel bigger. It is so true what they say, you guys. When you put a larger piece of furniture in a smaller space, it definitely does make the space feel bigger because when we have the smaller console, it did feel a lot smaller in here. And now that I put this in here, it feels a lot taller and grand. I honestly forgot for a second that this is Ikea because wow, it looks amazing in here. <laughs> setup. I literally can't get over it. So much more room for storage. I cannot wait to put all of our stuff in here. This project went by pretty smoothly and I am just so excited to refresh this whole entire wall. The TV will be coming back in and I will be decorating with a few other items. I kind of just use what I had for now. There is so much more to come. Let me know what you guys think about this project. And also if you haven't voted yet on which pattern I should do for this refresh, let me know in the comments. Should I do option A or option B? If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe so you can get videos from me every single week. And if you want to see more updates from me, you can check me out over on Instagram where I post every single day. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I will see you in the next one. Bye!